Happy holidays! It's the Sweet Heat Christmas episode. Holiday, everything, whatever, celebrate something, just be happy and wear crazy shit like this. So today I am super excited because I'm playing up a family tradition that exists not only in my family, but in families all across the US and Mexico, which is making tamales. But this year I want to make sweet tamales because A, I love sweet, hence sweet heat, but also one of the tamales that I really, really love in Mexico is pineapple tamales. So I am making a version today which is playing up my love of pineapple upside down cake. You get a lot of caramelization, you get a lot of butter and brown sugar, and those flavors pair so, so well with fresh corn masa. That's what we're making today. Pineapples, they are so amazing. Okay, always when you cut a pineapple, you wanna save the top. If you, I'm gonna show you here, we'll just, we'll have a little Rick's PSA. Okay, there's no need to throw this in a landfill. You can actually grow your own pineapple plant. All you do is cut the top off, break off this little fleshy bit, and then pull these little bottom leaves off. Trim off this pineapple-y bit. And now these little nubby things right there are actually the beginnings of roots. So if all you have to do is stick this in water and literally in one week, you will see little roots growing and then you can grow your own pineapple. That's my little PSA. So now to cut a pineapple, I'm just going to cut a little piece off the bottom and then just trim out the skin. All right, so now that were mainly trimmed out. Cut it in half, and then cut it in half again, making quarters. Some people get really offended by me taking out the core and other people don't. I'm gonna take out the core because it's very fibrous. I'm going to put these in the food processor, so I'm gonna give my food processor a little helping hand. And now we're ready to process this. Okay, so I'm gonna puree this in batches. I probably don't need to, but I don't want my poor little food processor to struggle. It's the holidays after all. So I'm just gonna pulse this up until we get a nice even chop. And now I'm going to pass this through a sieve only because I wanna separate out a little bit of the juice from the pineapple. I will add the juice directly to the masa and I'm going to roast the pineapple pieces in some brown butter. So just kind of stir your strainer. You don't even need a fine mesh strainer. You can use a medium mesh strainer as well. Okay, I think that is looking very good. And look how much juice we got out of there. Now we're just going to put this in a bowl and we will do the rest of the pineapple. So my pineapple is still draining. And while that is happening, I'm going to brown the butter. Ugh. This is a pound of butter. I know it looks like a lot. I mean, it is kind of a lot, but it's Christmas. We're making a dessert. There's a lot of butter in cookies and cakes. This is no different. Also, we're using four pounds of masa. So there is a lot of masa there. So we're just going to throw the butter into a cold, large Dutch oven. And I'm gonna turn this on high just to get it started. And then once it heats up, I'll reduce it down to medium. Okay, while my pineapple is cooking, I am going to work on the masa. This is two kilos or 4.4 pounds of delicious freshly ground masa. If you can't find fresh masa, you can use masa harina. And right there, or there, or there, or there, 
there's going to be a little tip from me on basically how much dried masarina to use to equal up one pound. I am going to add some ground up allspice and clove. You can use cinnamon, you could use pumpkin pie spice or apple pie spice, whatever flavors you like. Um, you can go ahead and add that in here, but I just ground these up and it's gonna add a very Christmassy vibe to this masa. I also have some granulated sugar. I'm going to add that as well. This is a cup and a half of granulated sugar, which I think is gonna be about the equivalent of a pineapple upside down cake. Now I'm just going to give this a little mixy mix. This is just like bread dough. You can knead it just like bread dough. All I wanna do is incorporate the sugar and the spices as much as I can. So I'm gonna add an ingredient that I very, very, very seldom, if not ever use in my tamales, which is baking powder. So what this is gonna do, it's actually gonna create a really, really light, almost cake-like texture. There is a lot of, oh, <laughs> There's a lot of baking powder in this. I called for 28 grams, which is about seven teaspoons. But again, we've got 4.4 pounds of masa, which is the equivalent of several cookies and cakes. So trust me, this is what you need to do. Okay, so now I'm just going to sprinkle this in. It's time to prep the hojas, which are decked out in red and green, the colors of holidays and Mexico and Italy and grapes and apples and all sorts of things. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go through. They look pretty clean. Sometimes you'll find some random corn husks. Sometimes you'll find a little bit of mold from when they were basically just sitting on top of one another. I'm gonna separate them out a little bit just to give them a helping hand and then we will soak these in some very hot water. All right, butter and pineapple are in. I'm gonna add a little bit of pineapple juice. I'm gonna start with a quarter cup just because I don't want the masa to be really, really wet. The thing about making tamales is, especially if you're using fresh masa, is you really can't control the amount of liquid that the whoever is grinding it for you is using. I've had some masas that are really dry and crumbly, and I've had other masas that are really, really wet. And so it's kind of a sliding scale. You want it to be smooth and hold its shape, but still be pretty, pretty wet and almost loose. And this is the consistency that you're looking for, like a really, really thick cake batter. Okay, it's time to roll. This type of tamal is actually really easy because it's not stuffed with anything. So all we have to do is just scoop the masa, put it in, make a little log and roll it up. Easy peasy. Now I'm gonna take all of the leftover scraps and I'm gonna line the bottom of my pot. So in the recipe, I wrote that you can basically wad up a piece of foil and put that in the center of the pot and use that as support to stack up all of the tamales. But since I have a lot of pineapple scraps, I decided to throw those in in place of the foil. They will contribute to the pineapple-y flavor as the tamales steam. Now I'm going to pour water carefully on the side of the pot. I don't wanna pour the water directly onto the tamales or else the masa could get really soggy and start to melt. Okay, so I am not in my house, obviously. So I'm using basically Airbnb equipment. So in my house, I have a, a much larger stock pot or tamale pot that I would normally use to stack the tamales. You can see that in this Dutch oven, about three inches of the tamales are sticking up. 
if I use this lid to cover it, I'm gonna squish them down. So what I'm gonna do is, this is actually a trick that a lot of you guys might have to do. Um, if you don't have a really tall pot, you might have to use a bowl, or in this case, I'm gonna use this pan and put it over the top, and then it'll steam. I'm not gonna crush my tamales, but because it's not a great seal, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this clean kitchen towel, I'm gonna get it wet, put it over the top, that'll trap the steam and the heat. It'll help contribute to an even cooking on the tamales, and then we'll put this over, and I won't lose a lot of heat and steam through the cracks between the two pots. I'm gonna bring the pot up to a boil, then reduce it down to the lowest simmer. They're gonna cook simmering for about 35 minutes, and then I'll pull one out to check it, see if it's done. So the way that you check to see if a tamal is done is after 35 minutes, you're gonna pull it from the pot, let it sit for about three to five minutes, and then carefully open it up. If the masa is still wet, if it sticks to the oja, then you need to keep cooking it. So fold it back up, gently put it back in the pot, and let it go for another five to 10 minutes. I was feeling a little bit extra and because we added another 20 minutes of cook time to the tamales, I decided to make a little pineapple butterscotch. So what I did was threw one cup of sugar into a dry saucepan. I am heating that up until it starts to melt on high heat. Make sure you keep swirling the sugar and incorporating the dry sugar into the melted caramel. Don't use a spoon in the caramel or you'll run the risk of crystallizing the sugar. Once you have a beautiful amber color, add your pineapple juice and salt. Swirl that until the sugar is completely dissolved. Let it come to a rapid boil, add your butter, swirl it till the butter's melted and you're done. They're done! Stop it. Stop. It's so light and airy, really buttery. And the funny thing is, is like the pineapple flavor, even though there's like a whole pineapple on the inside of this tamal, it's actually almost subtle. You get more of the corn flavor, but that caramel, it's like super bright, it's super pineapple-y and caramelly, and that's actually where you get a lot of pineapple flavor. But it's like this, it's like very earthy, but then bright with the caramel sauce, it's so good, oh my God. For a little glimpse behind the scenes, you might notice this dirty plate with like a few crumbs and three or four <laughs> ojas, that's because we have been devouring all of the caramel and many, many tamales. And we actually can't wait to finish this episode so we can just keep eating right out of the pot. That is how good they are. You absolutely have to make this. If you love pineapple, if you love tamales, you are gonna love this dish. Plus, change up your tamalada, freak out your family. And as always, if you like me, if you like this recipe, if you wanna see more tamal recipes, Make sure you hit like and subscribe and you will be notified as soon as there's another Sweet Heat episode. Happy holidays! And I'm waving, I don't know why. Come here, Choco. Happy holidays! Yeah, there's my...